Hey there guys, it's me Akshay. Today we are diving into the draconic playstyle of Nivelite. He is the strongest Hytor DPS and has a fun playstyle. In this guide, we are gonna see how he works, best artifacts, weapons, constellations, team comps and much more. Let's move on to his talent section. First, let's see about his elemental skill. Nivelite summons a ragging waterfall that deals AoE Hydro damage to opponents in front of him. After hitting an opponent, the skill generates 3 source water droplets near that opponent. If you have noticed that Hydro Traveler using the same Hydro Droplets, which only heals up the Traveler, in Nivi's case, it is observed and used as his charge attack, which gives a large amount of damage. And let's move on to his Elemental Burst. Nivellite's Burst deals AoE Hydro damage and after a short interval, generates 6 Source Water Droplets. Similarly to his skill, Nivellite's Burst makes up a small portion of his damage. However, the amount of Source Water Droplets it generates makes it mandatory the vast majority of his rotations and then his normal attack do not consume any stamina and if Nivellite's HP is above 50% will continuously drain his HP over their duration. Upon starting to wind up the charge attack, Nivellite can observe up to 3 nearby source order droplets and his passive talent head to the ancient seas authority will be enhanced. Each stack of past dragonic glories will increase the crit damage of charge attack equitable judgment by 14%. A maximum increase that can be achieved this way is 42%. And as Ascension 4 passive, Discipline of the Supreme Arbitration for each 1% of Nivellite's current HP greater than 30% of max HP, he will gain 0.6% Hydro Damage bonus. A maximum bonus of 30% can be obtained this way. An appreciated but minor increase to Nivellite's damage. Along with this utility talent increases the sprint speed by 15% while swimming under the water. Moving forward to his constellation, his C1 Venerable Institution. When Nivellite takes the field, he will obtain one stack of past Draconic Glories from the passive talent had to the Ancient Seas Authority. Additionally, his interruption resistance will be increased while using the charge attack empowerment. Nivellite's second ascension passive is incredibly important to maximize his damage, but players can easily max it by bringing multiple elements into the team. So this effect is not too important. The good part is that now people have more opportunities to bring two Hydro characters and trigger Hydro Resonance to boost the Lulax HP. And his constellation to Juridical Exhaustion. The passive talent head to the Ancient Seas Authority will be enhanced. Each stack of past Dragonic Glories will increase the crit damage of charge attack equitable judgment by 14%. The maximum increase that can be achieved this way is 42%. Nivellite's second constellation in Genshin Impact is a typically damage boost and 42% crit damage is alright if compared to top tier C2 like Raiden Shoguns or Nahidas. Nevertheless, it's great to have if players want to get a, as much DPS as possible from the Chief of Justice. His C3 just increases the level of normal attack as what seeks equilibrium by 3 and his C4 Crown of Commiseration when Nivellite is on field and is healed, one source water droplet will be generated. This effect can occur once every 4 seconds. Players should be able to maintain a 100% charge attack uptime by combining Nivellite's skill and burst. So this C4 is mostly a build up for his C6. And his C5 increases the level of uh, his burst damage by 3. And his C6 Wrathful Recompense. When using charge attack equitable judgment, Nivellite can observe nearby source water droplets in an AoE. Each observed droplet will increase the duration of charge attack. When equitable judgment hits opponents, it will fire off two additional currents every two seconds, each of which will deal 10% of Nivellite's max HP as hydro damage. Damage dealt this way will count as damage dealt by equitable judgment. Nivellite C6 allows him to use his charge attack for longer than 3 seconds and with 3 source water droplets getting absorbed on each equitable judgment cost. Players can expect around 6 seconds of charge attack twice the original duration. Combine it with other abilities like his Ascension 2 and Ascension 4 and weapon passive and Nivellite can easily maintain maximum stacks of some possessives while also endlessly releasing his water torrent. Moving on to his artifact sets, 
by easing up his crit rate requirements, Maresha C Hunter is the best build for Neolite as it can dramatically increase his damage output. His HP mechanic can easily activate the artifact's effect, allowing him to build more crit damage. You may can use 4 piece Wanderer's Troop, Nymph Stream, Heart of Death, or Retracting Bolite, or any of these two piece sets, but your go for option is 4 piece Maresha's Hunter. 2 piece Maresha's Hunter gives 15% normal attack and charge attack damage. Whereas 4 piece Mauritius Hunter gives you 36% crit rate whenever the user's HP changes is amazing for this character. Remember his charge attack can make him lose health when he is above 50% HP and could also heal him, triggering this set's effect effortlessly. And for the best artifact stats, you can go for HP% Sands and Hydro Damage or HP% Goblet in whichever you have good stats and crit rate or crit damage circular. And for energy recharge, if you use solo hydro team, you must have 100 to 140 percentage ER. And for double electro team, you must have 140 to 155 percentage ER. And for double or triple hydro team, you must have 100 to 140 percentage ER. Favonius weapon user on the team allows to gain extra energy recharge so the targets may vary. His R1 signature weapon and R5 prototype amber will allow 110 percentage to 120 percentage ER which is enough for most teams. Going forward to his weapon section, for Nivellite, best on slot is his signature weapon, Tome of Eternal Flow. Unsurprisingly, Nivellite's best weapon is a signature 5-star catalyst. It not only goes well with his design, but also strengthens everything at the core of his kit. Its main stat is crit damage, which is boosted by 19.2 to 88.2%, depending on its level. Its passive increases HP by 16 to 32%, just by having it equipped. On top of raising charge attack damage by 14-30% to any time his HP rises or falls, considering that he drains and restores his HP while doing his charge attack, you'll be getting that damage buff pretty much constantly. It can stack up to 3 times and after the third, 8-12 to 12 energy is replenished. So on top of greatly expanding his damage potential, this weapon also lets you use Nivellet's elemental bus that much more often. Moving on to the next weapon, Witsit. Witsit is a standard banner weapon and has been around for a while. So if you've been playing for some time, you probably have at least one copy of it already. It's considered an excellent weapon for Catalyst users who specializes in DPS. Its main stat amplifies crit damage by 12 to 55.1%, which is already nothing to sneeze at. Its passive is interesting as it has a random chance to do one of the three things. Increase attack by 60 to 120%, increase elemental damage by 48 to 96%, or increase elemental mastery by 240 to 480%. All three of those things can be useful depending on how you play New Light. Though the elemental damage increases is generally the best one to get. And the next weapon is Sacrificial Jade. This weapon is only obtained by the battle pass. So, how simple it is to get depends on how willing you are to hand over some cash to whoever. But if you are the kind who considers the battle pass worth the investment, Sacrificial Jade is a great weapon to give Nivellite. It raises several stats, including two of the most significant ones for him, Max HP and Crit Rate. Crit Rate is the main stat and goes from 8 to 36.8%. The Max HP rate is part of the passive going from 32 to 64%, depending on its refinement. This catalyst also raises the elemental mastery by 40 to 80 points, which is definitely useful for any hydro reactions. And the next weapon is Ballad of the Boundless Blue. Since this catalyst is an event exclusive, it is a missable weapon. But if you have it, you are in luck, because it's pretty good in on Nivellet. Though it doesn't increase max HP, its passive raises normal and charge attack damage by 8 and 6% to 16 and 12% respectively. And the next weapon is Prototype Amber. Prototype Amber has come in clutch for Catalyst users whose abilities are based on their max HP like Kokomi and Barbara. It's a forgeable weapon so you don't have to spend any of your hard earned promo gems to get it. And it increases max HP by 9 to 41.3% depending on its level. Its passive skill will also regenerate a little of both Nivellite's energy and HP. Two very important stats. But 4 to 6 energy particles and HP percentage depending on the weapon's refinement rank. This weapon is an easy way to increase Nivellite's damage output 
while simultaneously giving him some leeway energy and healing needs. And the next weapon is Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. This catalyst is a easy to both get and refine thanks to its 3 star rarity. It's more useful for healing and support units. Since the passive boosts the damage of the teammate, Nuvolite will switch to by 24 to 48% depending on its refinement. But it's still a good cheap option if you already have one you raised. Since it would also increase Neolite's max HP by 7.7 to 35.2% depending on its level. And since it's a 3 star, even if you don't have one, leveling it up wouldn't take very long. Besides, who said Neolite couldn't have some supportive capabilities too? Moving on to his team comms, this Neolite team is working perfectly to maximize his damage while protecting him. Nuvalite and Farina are arguably the best pair in Genshin Impact. What makes them so special is their synergy together. Farina wants her team to lose and gain HP in order to maximize her buff, while Nuvalite's mechanics greatly drop his own HP and then fully heal him back, instantly getting the most out of what Farina can offer without a healer. Since Nuvalite will be attacking enemies with his charge attack non-stop, he should not be interrupted and that's why Zhongli can be useful. Not only does Zhongli provide a perfect shield for Nuvalite, but he also shred enemies resistant from around Nuvalite, providing further buffs to the Ludax of Fontaine. Finally, Kazuha doesn't need any introduction as he collects enemies in one spot, massively reduce their resistance and greatly increase Nuvalite's hydro damage. This Nuvalite team in Genshin Impact is so far one of the best teams in the entire game. Moving on to his next team, as a strong Hydro DPS who can continuously deal Hydro damage, Nuvalite can definitely lead a Hyper Bloom team. With Farina by his side, Nuvalite's charge attacks are sure to be deadly to their opponents, as they both enable Hydro all over the field. This is where Raiden and Nahida come in handy. Both Archons can easily apply Electro and Dendro to create Blooms and then trigger them in Hyper Bloom. This team doesn't need a healer since Raiden Shogun, Farina and Aida barely step on the field, while Nivalite is more than capable of continuously healing himself and maximizing Farina's buff. Going on to his next team, Nivalite's Ascension passive grants him higher charge attack damage when a party member triggers Hydro related reactions, up to 3 stacks. So Nivalite team composition should include at least 2 other reactive characters against bosses. This team comp is amazing because the party includes 3 elements that can react with Hydro and Zhongli provides reliable resistance to interruptions to ensure Nivalite can charge attack smoothly and Nahida will continuously apply Dendro and trigger elemental reactions as long as her seeds of Skanda is available and Shongling is an excellent pyro enabler and allows Nivalite to vaporize some of his hits the way this team works is by using Zhongli's first skill then applying Nahida's skill to the enemy, then cast Shongling's skill and burst to burn the enemy, which allows Nuvalite to vaporize his elemental skill. Next, charge attack with the Chief of Justice to apply Hydro, which will make Shongling's Pyrando trigger vaporize. Due to Pyrando's prominent Pyro application, the enemy will eventually be affected with Pyro and burn with Dendro, allowing Nuvalite to vaporize some of his charge attacks in the rotate. Note that while this team is excellent against bosses or single target opponents, it can be hard to maintain the vaporous idea against hordes of enemies. Players also should remember not to be too far from the enemy as Pyrondo has limited range. And his next team, unfortunately as Shongling is currently the only reliable pyro enabler and sub DPS, the next multi-reaction team comp for Nevalite involves a hyper bloom reaction. While it's not as good against bosses, the Hyper Bloom or Electro Charge combo is better against multiple enemies. Baizu will provide healing and shielding, which allows Nivalite to charge attack without getting interrupted. Then once the field is filled with Dendro Coast, Raiden Shogun's skill will apply Electro to trigger Hyper Bloom. In the process, she'll also trigger Electro Charge for Nivalite's Ascension Passive. Finally, Venti should swill Hydro to reduce the enemy's Hydro resistance and restore energy for Nivalite's burst. The grouping Venti provides will also come in handy for the Ludax Water Torrent. Nuvalite can easily aim towards enemies flying in Venti's Vortex, and both Baizu and Raiden Shogun will auto target the enemies, so players don't have to worry about the opponents being out of range. And to his next team, there are many Hyper Bloom team players can use to create a Nuvalite team comp. For example, the viable Dendro characters are Nahida, Baizu, Kirara, Yayo, and Koli. 
As for electro, people can use Cookie Shinobu, Raiden Shogun, Yemiko or Dori. For the final slot, either it can be Animo or Geo. But if the team has enough reactions to maximize Neurite's passive, then a second Hydro to increase HP is also a good option. Examples of units travelers can use include Songli, Albedo, Linnet, Kazuha, Sayu, Venti, Sucrose, Kokomi and Mona. In this example, Cookie Shinobu is the one triggering Hyper Bloom with Nahida enabling Dendro. Since Neolite is self-sufficient and can heal himself easily, the X-Shrine Maiden's healings is not too important but will still come in handy if players take damage with other units. Just remember that this team doesn't have a shielder, so Neolite must be positioned properly to avoid interruptions when using his charge attack. Meanwhile, Kazuha will debuff the enemy's hydro resistance, buff Neolite's hydro damage and group the enemies all at the same time. Unlike the Venti team where Raiden Shogun can easily reach inside the Animo Orcon's bust, Cookie range is more limited, so Kazuha is great replacement. Let's move on to his DBS showcase. He is level 90 and I have triple crowned him and his HP is above 35k. And to his crits. His crit rate will be increased to 44 plus 36% which is 80% because of his artifact set Marechius Hunter. For his crit damage 297%. And he is C0. I am showcasing my favourite hyper carry team which involves Nivi, Farina, Kazuha and Songli. Be entertained by my non food buffed and starved Nivellac. Yeah. 